it's been a while since I've done a uh, Blender tutorial, uh, but I am working in Blender uh, 2.67 today, and um, what we're going to do is we're going to do a snowflake effect in front of an image or video. Um, uh, we'll make it so that you can render this out as a video that you can later on superimpose on top of images or videos, and then I'll also show you how you can do it right here in Blender. There's multiple ways to do it. And we aren't going to go for real realistic snowflakes, although you could. We're going to go for ones, you know, that look like drawings of snowflakes. Uh, so what I did first was I did a Google search for snowflake, found an image that I liked. Uh, and of course, uh, you really should make sure you have the rights to use the image. Um, and I made sure that it had a transparent background and it was just the white. So here's an example. This is uh, Blender's in full screen mode here. This is the original image I, I found. It's a JPEG and it has a black border and a white background, neither of which I want. So I brought it into GIMP, added an alpha channel, and cut away the black. Um, not going to go into that because that's pretty simple and not really part of the tutorial, which is on Blender. You can also find snowflakes that are already have a transparent background, so that would be an option as well. So here we are in our default scene. Uh, I am going to hide those two tabs there, uh, hitting T for that one and then for this one, bringing them in and out. Also notice that I did turn on screen ca casting this time so you can see what keys and mouse buttons I'm pressing down at the bottom here. I'm going to delete the default cube and the default light because I don't need a light source for this. I'm going to hit zero on my, or one on my number pad and then control alt zero. It's bringing the camera into the front view so I'm looking straight on. So next thing I need to do is open up um, my uh, user preferences. Uh, I got to do that. There we go. User preferences. And under add-ons, you're going to want to, and I always have this enabled by default, but if you just type in plain, you'll find what says import images as plain. It makes it very easy to import images as plain, as a plain. So once you have that enabled, I'm going to hit spacebar. And if you just type in plane, you'll see you can add a plane or import images as plane. I'm going to choose that. I'm going to go to the folder where I have the image saved. It's a PNG. It's right here. I'm going to set it to shadeless, use alpha, Z transparent, and I'm going to say import images plane. So there it is. It's laying flat. We can't see it right now because it's laying flat. So I'm going to hit R, X, and 90. Hit enter to rotate it 90 degrees. I'll hit F12. You can see we have a big old snowflake there. Great. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, with that selected, object, apply, rotation. Just, just get in the habit of doing that. And this, we're going to have random falling snowflakes. I don't think it really matters. But we're going to move that off to the side so it's out of our view for now. Now I'm going to hit spacebar and type in plane again and just add a regular plane, which is laying flat in front of us. I'm going to scale it up so that it's a little bit wider than our camera view. Grab it on the z-axis and move it up so it's just added the camera view. Okay, and in fact, I'm going to scale it up a little bit bigger and move it up a little bit because uh, I do I want to get some of the flakes pretty close to the camera. So if I go into my side view here, you can see it's pretty close to the camera now. Again, be artistic, whatever you think looks better. With that plane selected, though, I am going to go over to our particles tab add particles and if we hit alt a over the 3d view here alt a it'll start playing an animation so we already have kind of a snowflakey type fall thing we got a lot of them outside of the camera view doesn't really matter what i'm going to do now is i'm going to hit escape to stop that i'm going to hit uh, shift and up arrow a few times till we get to a frame with a bunch i'm going to show you right now if i hit f12 we got these nasty little orb things which might be good if that's the effect you're going for but that's not what we're going for and this reason because our particles is set to halos what we want to do is set it to match this object over here, which is our plane with our image of snowflakes on it. So with the emitter plane, our big plane up here selected, I'm going to scroll down under its particles tab and change where it says halo to object. And inside the objects, I'm going to click here. I should have renamed it, but it was the first plane I imported, so it's called plane. Uh, I'm very bad about naming things, but I know the order I imported them. This is plane. Uh, this is plain, and this is plain dot zero zero one. You can see them up in the little uh, tree up here, in case you get confused. 
Uh, again, with the big plane, plane 001 chosen. Uh, so we've set it to uh, um, match this object here. So if I hit F12 now, you can see little dots. And they you don't really see the snowflake thing because they're all pointing in. We're going to set it to some random settings here to adjust that a little bit. So again, with that plane select, I'm going to scroll up. I'm going to turn up the randomness here. I'm going to turn this random on. And under, I'm going to just check rotation, which will give us somewhat of a rot uh, randomness of the rotation. So uh, we got the snowflakes falling. Um, again, you can tweak those numbers to fit what you like. But let's get to a frame in here and hit F12. They're all pretty small. So you, you have two options. Inside the particle tab, we can adjust the uh, the size here which is one option which is a good option or if you want you can always just resize the original and it's proportionate to that um, you can see they're all still pointing down so with this plane selected uh, let's go back up to our rotation here and turn the randomness up about halfway and now they should start rotating in somewhat of a random pattern it does not look like they are. Uh, let's turn this random. Basically, I'm just turning up everything that says random. Um, to get There we go. That's a little bit better. So now we're getting more of a random snowflake fall. Now, it takes a little while for them to come in. And then they fade away at the end. And that has to do with the number that we set, when it starts, the lifespan of them, and when they end. Um, but... I'm pretty happy with what we've got. What I'm just going to do is I'm going to, again, I could set the start to be before the first frame. But I'm coming here, we're about where they are fully covering the screen, which is around frame, around 40 to 50. So I'm just going to set the first keyframe, or the first frame of our scene to 50. And the last one, I think, will be about 200. Yeah, it's a little higher than 200, but I'm going to set 200. I like nice round numbers. 200. So come in here in the middle somewhere we'll hit F12 we got these snowflakes falling let's make it a black background we're gonna choose our world view here horizon oops and set it down to black F12 so now we have our snowflakes falling with a black background again you can tweak those numbers more and maybe get you can get you know some wind going if you want to put in a force all depending on how you want it to look I'm happy with this right here um, so as we fall, I want to see if we have any close-up flakes. So there, there's a pretty decent size one. We'll hit F12. So you'll get those big flakes every once in a while. Now, you could render this out as a video and use it as an overlay on pictures and videos in the future, either importing it back into Blender in its video editor or its compositor, or you can bring it into a video editor like Caden Live. Or really, pretty much any editor will give you the ability to do an addition, um... Uh, blend kind of like if you're in GIMP or Photoshop and you have your different modes for layers and you set it to addition if you watch the tutorial on adding snowflakes to a still image we use the addition option you can do the same thing in pretty much any video editor so you could render that out and avoid having to go through this whole process again later or you can save this blend file what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the image that I want to use import it as a plane and just put it behind all the snowflakes and render it out as is that's another way of doing it so again, I'm going to hit spacebar. I'm going to type in plane, import images as plane. I'm going to use shadeless. Alpha doesn't matter. There is no alpha in this image, but I'm just going to leave a check because that's, I guess it's check now. <laughs> um, and I'm going to choose the image that I want. You can also, uh, you know, do a uh, thumbnail view here to find the image you want. So I'm going to import that. It's lying flat there. I'm going to hit R X. Oh, I almost sneezed. Okay, R X. Type 90 on your number pad, hit enter, it's rotated. Now we want to make sure that it's back behind all our snowflakes. So I'm going to hit 3, then grab 3 on the number pad to turn to the side view, G to grab, Y, and then pull it back just to make sure it's behind our snowflakes. 0 on the number pad to go back to our front, or our camera view, which is our front view in this case. And we're going to hit S and scale that up so that it's just outside the image, uh, our camera border. So here's our camera, 
here's the image. You'll notice that still images and videos are of different ratios. That's why we're going to be cropping it. Videos tend to be a little bit wider than uh, what still cameras take. Um, same goes when you go to get photos printed. For some reason, cameras take a more, it's not a rectangle, uh, or not a square, but it's more of a square shape uh, than they actually print. So if you ever had to go print photos, sometimes you might notice that things get cropped on the top and bottom. Same thing here. But the way we have it set up, that plane back behind all our snowflakes, this snowflake out of the way, this plane up here, uh, if, uh, did I mention we made it uh, so it's emitted objects. It's out of the camera view, but we can also click uncheck the emitter. So in case for some reason this ended up in the camera view by accident, it won't render. So we'll uncheck that. But at this point, I can hit F12. And there's the picture with the snowflakes. And now we can go to our render tab here. And I can choose that I want to save it under uh, snowfall.avi. In fact, we got to change it. I, I'm going to use XVID. That's what I like to use. A lot of people like H.264. Uh, it's up to you. I'm going with XVID here. But you also have to choose the encoding here. Um, it has, it seems to, there was a previous version of Blender where it did not put the preset properly. So you would have to come in here and choose XVID again, um, which is what I'm doing now. Uh, so I would do that just to be sure, and you can adjust the you know the the bit rate if you wanted here. I'm just going to leave it 600 or 6,000 is kind of low, but for this project it doesn't matter. In fact, uh, at this point, the by default I have it set to be 1080p. You can choose presets from the drop down here, but also notice that by default Blender does a half resolution. So if you want to render the full 1080p, you're going to want to turn that up. At this point. Uh, we have, I'm saving, I'm saving it to my temp folder. Obviously, you don't want to do that if you want to save, actually save the video long term. But I'm going to click animate, and it will start rendering out the images. And at least on my computer, it's taken about two seconds a frame, and we're doing 150 frames. So you do the math. It's going to take a couple of minutes. Uh, but uh, we'll see the end results here in a moment. Anyway, I thank you for watching, and... Uh, Please visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. Link in the description. Normally I have videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. This was a bonus Christmas video for you, so I hope that you have a Merry Christmas. Um, if you don't celebrate Christmas, you should. It's lots of fun. Um, and uh, please visit my website. Again, the link's in the description. And I hope that you have a great day.